Welcome back to Sister Circle Live, formerly of VH1's Black Ink crew. Our next guest is known for her sharp skills and even sharper tongue. Woo! Please welcome Duchess Lattimore, a.k.a. the Duchess of Ink. Yes! Hi, Duchess! <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Really, you gonna give us a shy girl? Right, you gonna give us a shy girl? Hi, oh. beautiful. So glad to have you here. Hi, Pumpkin. This is How really are you? a man. How are you? So amazing. You have to there. So you look gorgeous. Thank you. I was nervous about dressing and preparing for this whole really? experience. Really? Really? Why? Why? Because people's expectation, especially coming from reality TV, uh -huh. is something that it's not who I am. Yeah. yeah. So to be a part of things that actually are in line and in tune with my journey it's yeah. like okay so that's when i get nervous because it's like dang this is like where i'm supposed to be and right. now i'm actually there well Yay. this is your time yes. to show yes. the world exactly who you are without yes. being skewed how yes, about that gotta yes, love it now Got with to. that being said i did watch a little bit of you know yeah you, I show. Like, I you, my, you are my favorite and my husband's too he like you he, he's like, oh, I ain't gonna lie, I love you and your husband. I was I was trolling your page the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, this is just it's so it's black inspiring. Love, right? It's so inspiring. Oh, so thank inspiring. you. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Girl. Yes. Well, I want to get back to the show. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. We, we do have to do yeah, an interview yeah. here. Well, yeah, we do. All right. <laughs> but on the show, um, you are very upfront with everything. You tell it like it is. Um, where did you get that from? And why do you think it's important for women to speak their mind? Um, growing up. I come from a two-parent home, mm -hmm. which is a very big blessing in this day and age. Sure yes, it is. is. But um, my dad and my mom are so amazing and evenly yoked as like a, a marriage mm -hmm. should be. Mm -hmm. And um, growing up, my mom, she cooks every day. Mm -hmm. She takes care of the house. She still works, but she's like the traditional Southern yeah. woman. Yeah. And my dad is like a Southern man, ex-military, like, he's a manly man. Yeah. So my dad, mm -hmm. growing up, I was a tomboy, and he would be like, I don't want you to be like your mama because she's just so emotional, and she's just so this, and she's <laughs> just so that. So I would be like, okay, so I'm going to be like my dad. And then that's where the toughness comes from. Yeah. And I used to think that would be, like, something that my mom was weak for. Mm -hmm. And then as I grew up and became a woman, I learned that, my mom was the strongest one in yeah. the entire equation. Yeah. And the fact that she could still be vulnerable and still do all of the amazing things that she does, like that's what really makes you strong. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the outspoken part comes from my dad, but then that the that womanly, it's just it's, it's innate. It's right, something that my right. mom, just being around her and my grandma, mm -hmm. you can't help but absorb it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and speaking of relationship, you spoke openly about you and Caesar and, and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. I watched everything. Mm -hmm. um, why did you decide to leave the show? The show wasn't in line and in tune with the person that is conducive to the woman that I am supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah. Um, I was around people. First off, I'm from North Carolina. I'm the only person that's not from New York right, that was right. on the show. So mm -hmm. that already makes me an outlier. Then I'm a black woman who's in a male-dominated industry, mm -hmm. being a tattoo artist. Then I'm an HBCU graduate. Come on, HBCU. Aggie pride. Come on, <laughs> come on Aggies. So I'm the only college graduate in the bunch. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. I'm the only bunch that comes, I'm the only one in the bunch that comes from a two-parent home. Mm -hmm. All of these dynamics, all of these things don't match the environment that I was a I part of. Yeah, I get it. How has rebranding been since you've been off the show? How has that been for you? Has that been a challenge? I mean, what are you doing? What are some of the steps you're taking to rebrand yourself? When I first walked away from the show, I wanted to kill myself. Oh, my God. I went through serious depression. Wow. I went through getting harassment from cast members, death threats from them, people that they would send to, to do disrespectful things. They would call my shop, and my mom runs, she runs my tattoo shop, mm -hmm. tell my mother, like, the most heinous things that they were going to do to me if I ever came back to New York, and all of these things. It got to a point where... I didn't think that I would ever escape it. What? Oh and this, God, is this is two and a half years ago, right. mind you. Then the new season of the show airs. Yes. And I'm the topic of discussion. Yes. And you're not even there. Every episode, and I'm not even there. Mm -hmm. So it's like once I went through 
the depression at home by myself. Now y'all want me to go through public humiliation because you don't have a storyline? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Like it's been the, reality the is hardest, most, when I, I, I don't even watch TV, definitely not reality TV, but one of my homegirls hit me up and she was like, you gotta watch The Real Housewives of Atlanta um, reunion. Mm -hmm. And I watched it and it tore me up inside to see the Candy and Portia situation. Because mm -hmm. yeah. people don't understand how hard it is to build your brand and mm -hmm. for someone to tear it down with lies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's the hardest thing that you can ever do. And I felt every ounce of passion that Candy sat in that chair. Like, Portia has no understanding of what that, that feels like, what that means for people to believe something about you that's not even True. who you are. Right, right. Well, and now you have the world too. doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you don't understand it from being in that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a different level of understanding. Mm -hmm. When you laying in your bed, when you got people calling you, harassing you, Brands don't want to work with you anymore because they believe the foolishness. Like, it's a lot of things that go into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when people meet me, like today, the makeup artist who is amazing, who did my face, <laughs> she was like, I said, um, what was your perception of me? Like, what did you expect me to be like? And she was like, nothing like you are. Wow. wow. Yeah. And if anybody knows me, that is the story that I get everywhere Every. I go. That's I not fair this, to me. I saw the sweetness. Two things, uh, really quickly. I want to talk a little bit about your upcoming HBCU tour, and then I want to give you the opportunity to tell the world exactly who you are. Yeah, and I appreciate that, Queen. Yes. I really do. Yeah. Um, my HBCU tour is, is necessary. Trinidad James, y'all know who that is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> He's been on the show. Yes. Trinidad James, let me tell y'all. He is beyond words. I hate that people attach him to to the song. Like he's, he's extremely so smart. He's beyond smart. that, yes. he is a superpower. And he did this song that he um, released in February called Black Excellence. As soon as we met, we just connected on like a, a mental, intellectual, like something that you don't see young people do anymore. Mm -hmm. And we just gravitated, and I fell in love with the song. And I was like, yo all the HBCUs need to be turning up to this. Yeah. Because this is what separates us mm -hmm. from the world that people think that black people fit in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, that's so dope. You're right. right. So we just came up with this idea of doing the Black Excellence HBCU tour. Love mm -hmm. it. I love it. it. Where's we, it kicking off? We're going to kick it off at my school, North Carolina A&T. <laughs> yes. I got this. I'm yes. like Agus. Y'all cool. So we're going to kick it off at a &T, but we want to be able to touch every HBC yes. in this country. And we really want to touch the young kids that are in, like, high school, yes. sophomores and juniors that yeah. don't know what they want to do because mm -hmm. this is when you can actually get right back into what you want. Right, right. Make sure you uh, visit TSU and FAMU. And now tell us yes. who Duchess is. Exactly. So, who is Duchess? Duchess is a woman that cannot be put in a box. I'm an artist. I come from an amazing mother. People don't understand how important parenting is. Oh. Mm -hmm. When you have parents, it puts you in a different world. And shout out to all the people that are being parents, because people don't understand how hard that is and how real, that's the hardest job. I don't care if you're a doctor, I don't care if you're a heart surgeon. Being a parent is tougher than that, because you are instilling something that is, is life to these people. And, that's what I am. I'm a vessel, mm -hmm. and I'm allowing God to use me. And I used to be mad at how they portrayed me on the show, and I used to be upset about it. And I realized that nobody on that show is strong as me that could go through all of that. Right. Nobody has the courage to be right, wrong, and different than I was. And if for not any other reason, that's enough. <laughs> Every day I get women that come up to me and they're like, you don't know how much you motivated me to leave, to follow my heart, to do what I want to do. And I didn't do anything but live my life. And I inspired them by just living my life. Yes. Like, if for no other reason, VH1 allowed those producers to make me look like whatever they choose to, I know who I am. Yes. And people who meet me, they know who I am. And the, the, the light that God has given me, it radiates beyond all the darkness that they can surround me with. We see the light. Oh, we and, do. We see the light. And, and that's my power. Yes. So I'm just a vessel. And yes. to all the women out there that have been disrespected, berated, hurt, belittled, don't let it break you. Because it will if you let it. You have to let it build you. 
And you have to have amazing women like this to look up to. Can I get a tissue, please? Not the women that you see in reality TV that think it's okay to disrespect each other, to allow men to disrespect them. These are the type of things that you have to surround yourself with. And I'm so glad that I'm at the place in my life now that I have those things. Beautiful. Because there's people that are far past me that will never have this. That's no matter where they go in their life. And even if they see it around them, they, won't be able to they can't even receive it. recognize, afraid to receive wow. it. So Wait. that's my power. And it makes me one of the most amazing people that I know. Yes. Loving, and that allows kind, me to vessel. know even greater people. So well, that's what Duchess is. Well, big, big and she's a crybaby. <laughs> <laughs> well, Big Mama D said we're going to come back with you in just a second and wrap things up. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. And the great thing about uh, live television is sometimes you have to call an audible. And because Duchess uh, had such a moving uh, just moving soliloquy, monologue, <laughs> a thing to say uh, about your life. We are going to forego uh, yoga until tomorrow, so uh, we'll have that uh, for you tomorrow. Let's talk a little bit more about your shop that your mother runs, uh, Pretty in Ink. Tell us all about it. Pretty in Ink is it's exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. Pretty in Ink. Um, like, it's different than any other tattoo shop. Where's it located? We're in downtown Charlotte, downtown North Carolina. Charlotte. Love and it. Charlotte is such a beautiful place. It's mm -hmm. starting to really grow. And it's just a really good place for me to be right now, to be back at home, to be surrounded by love and people that I grew up with that really know me. Yeah. Now, Duchess, to venture out into your own business, I mean, now, you're not employed. Mm. This is actually all on you. Were you afraid? That was the biggest fear of my life. Yeah. I had a business plan for Pretty and Ink in college. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. 2009, I had the business plan complete. And I'm just now actually, like, seeing it come to fruition. So yeah. it's very hard, but you have to be your biggest cheerleader. And that's, that was my biggest problem. Mm -hmm. I was my toughest critic instead of my biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And as women, that's what we do all the time. We can cheerlead anybody else on, but we don't cheerlead no ourselves. Time. We just yeah, critique yeah. ourselves. And we don't even bother critiquing the people that's around that we cheerlead. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we got to reverse those roles and really, like, just push yourself to do it. Yes. Mm. Well, we thank you so much for being here. Yes. Absolutely. Such as did her thing. She sure did. And she changed lives she while did. she did it. I'm sure she did. Yes. I'm sure we're going to be getting a lot of tweets about that. Up next, we want to hear from you and what the people say. Stay tuned. All right. Thank you, Duchess. Thank, thank you.